Welcome back to News Across Nigeria. This is where we bring you news from the 36 states of the Federation covering the six geopolitical zones. Facts about Boronu states, uh, where we just were just before the break, where the insurgency is being contained by the valiant efforts of the Nigerian army. Just some facts about this great northeastern state that has had to contend with the insurgency of Boko Haram. But a major, major state in the Nigerian Federation. 27 local government areas, seven emirate councils forming a part of what that state is. Home of peace, and that is where we hope uh, the state is going to get back uh, in spite of all the insurgency that has taken place there. Now from there to Kogi and Bayelsa states where the electoral umpire, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, continues the voter registration in the two states to prepare for the governorship elections. The commission announced on Tuesday that the exercise will take place for five days in both states. INEC says the essence of the continuous voter registration is for three eligible groups. They include one, those who are eligible but did not register before the 2015 elections, those who are elig eligible but whose names are not on the voters' register, and three, those who have attained the age of 18 years since the last voter registration exercise. The Commission has asked voters to go to their local government areas in Kogi and Bayelsa states, where it is expected that the exercise will begin every day from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. The election has been scheduled in Kogi for Saturday, November the 21st, and for Bayelsa, it will hold on Saturday, December the 5th, 2015. And joining us in our studios is our political correspondent, Shewan Kimbaloye, to give us more of a heads up on what's happening with the continuous voter registration. Uh, are there any that would argue that it wasn't necessary? Yeah, it's a process that a lot of people, you know, after the 2015 election, so remember uh, one thing that was very, very uh, much on the lips of so many Nigerians is uh, the issue of PVC, the permanent voter card. Mm -hmm. And what uh, precedes this is a CVR, the Continuous Voter Registration, which is very important. You remember after the 2011 elections, INEC did come out to say that, look, we do not have a register that, is, that we, we are proud of. The register uh, is, uh, uh, has a lot of double registration, has a lot of uh, issues with it and all of that. And it's not something that they are proud of. And so they wanted a register that, don't forget, re uh, the voter register is a spine of any electoral system. So when you have a voter register that is faulty, that you have tied on the database. And that's why when INEP brought about the permanent voter card, they brought the issue of uh, the, the machine where they have to verify your fingerprint, your details have to go into it. Some of the uh, pictures that is going on the screen now shows mm -hmm. the past uh, efforts of uh, INEC to bring the, the machine to verify the voter card. So when do you, that do, is done... Yeah. Do you foresee... Sorry to interrupt you. Do you foresee any challenges such as we had in the last elections with the PVCs after the CVR is done? There are a lot of challenges that came with the, the one in the mm. 2015 mm. election. The issue of voter education. People are not really educated on what they need to do. Um, the issue of logistics. The issue of uh, nearness of the of the registration centers to where people live. A lot of people say they registered before where they work, and now they have to vote where they live because on the voting day you won't be able to go to work. So there is all of these uh, problems. But this time around, because it's a state election, it should give people more opportunity to go out. It's not a general election where we find people going uh, out there. Uh, every two weeks or every week for, for voting. But this is a one-off election in the states. It's a staggered elec governorship election because yes. this election held uh, outside of the scheduled time for the other states. So 
Uh, you think it will give ANEC more of an opportunity to do... Uh, to update its register now yes. because... So all their resources should be available exactly. for these so elections. What is happening is that a lot of people, just like the three categories of people, those who did not register before the 2015 election, you can now register. If you were not 18 at that time, the voting age in Nigeria, you can now go and register. A few statistics that I'll just throw at you, uh, mm -hmm. Olumide, that will give yes. you an understanding of exactly what is going to happen. All right. Uh, before, as of March uh, 21, 2015, this is what uh, is, is on the ground in okay. Bayelsa State. They have uh, uh, a, a number of registered voters in Bayelsa State put at 610,373 voters in Bayelsa State. Right. And as at that time, only 548,585 uh, cards collected. And okay. the percentage of that is 89% uh, voter cards that have been collected in PVC. Okay. Let's flip the page and go to Kogi State. Mm -hmm. i give you an understanding that uh, in Kogi State, there are about 1 million 350, about 1.4 million voter, uh, registered voters in Kogi State as at right. INEX register into uh, the 21st of March 2015. Mm -hmm. They collected 926,000 cards and the percentage is put at 68 uh, percent. So that, that, those are the statistics that we have from INEC. Mm -hmm. But from uh, what went down at the 2015 general election, because these are the figures that went into the election. And at the end then. of the day... So there's what, a shortfall. Yeah, there's a shortfall. Not as much as people who register went to vote. And these are some of the issues uh, people are saying, to, I mean, telling INEC that you need to educate people. People need to know exactly what is happening. They need to know when they need to go out. Some of the things that I have seen personally in this case is that people have been asked to go to their local government areas. Their local government areas may be too far from where they live because there are just a few local governments in the state, maybe about 20 in some state, about 17 in other states. So what happens is that if you do not break it down for to uh, 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 several uh, registration centers, you might not have as much turnout as you want to have. Because the difficulty in getting exactly. to the Exactly. What other state, what centers. happened in the 2015 general election mm. was that they gave about two, three days public holidays in some states so that people can go and register. This kind of thing should happen in some others, in these two states. Finally, so finally, you think this will serve as a litmus test to see how INEC is good, is prepared for, for its, its job with these two elections? Well, of course, this will tell us whether or not INEC is set for these two elections. One is in November, the other one is in December. So this time around, INEC as a template that has been used in the 2015 general elections, that is the CVR has been done nationwide. We've gone into the PVC collection and all of that. We've seen the voting and some of the challenges. It, it gives INEC some opportunity. Logistics should not be a problem. Yeah, because, because all their resources are just two, are, uh, yeah, so just just two put, states. Uh, what happens yes. most of the time is mm -hmm. that national we have about two, three, four national commissioners with about three, four uh, resident electoral commissioners coming into this state to make sure that the attention is on, the, uh, on, on that particular state in staggered elections. Okay. So what happens in, in this one is that it gives INEC an open eyes that this election we cannot afford to make mistakes. And we hope it goes well. Uh, we hope. We'll save the we rest of to. politics today. Shewo. No problem. No problem. <laughs> thanks Many so thanks. Much. Our correspondent Shewo Okimbaloye. Politics today. Don't forget to watch out for that on channels television every time it comes up on Sundays. And uh, news across Nigeria continues. We turn our attention to Cross River State. For those who won at the last elections, there's much to be done in terms of delivering on campaign promises. One of them, Cross River State Governor Ben Ayade has reassured the people of his state of keeping faith with all his electioneering promises before the end of his tenure. Top on the agenda, as difficult as it may look, according to the governor, is the reconstruction of the Calabar Ogoja Ikom Highway to a dual carriage road to meet the many demands of the people. Speaking at his country home in Obudu, local government area of the state, while on a Thanksgiving mission for the victory at the polls and a su successful handover, Governor Yade also promised to restore electricity supply to the surrounding rural communities in the northern and central senatorial districts of the state, which have been for the past years in perpetual darkness. As I speak, please take note, because four years' time, I'll come back knocking your door. You will ask me, you stood before the church and you made this promise. But how can a people live in perpetual darkness in this world? 
What is the essence of being a governor? When I come to my people, every day there is no light in Obudu. The treasury of the state is in my hands. And I'm going to shock this country. When I come before you and you don't have a superhighway four years from here, I am not Ayadi. So I want to assure you that you will see a vista of a new opportunity. The electricity problem you have in Obudu, the electricity problem you have in the north, in the central, these are areas where hardly will find light. There is never power. If you have this Christmas in darkness and extends to Easter, this is not me. And that's the Wednesday edition of News Across Nigeria. Many thanks for watching. I'm Olumide Mokoli. See you again. <laughs>